Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Ready Speaker again. It's another episode of a uh, reaction uh, review for a short film, a uh, popular short film that I found online. And I think it's kind of fun, actually. This is, I think, uh, something I'm, I'm getting into where, where I'm enjoying talking about these films and what's wrong and what's not wrong and what I enjoy and, and sometimes what I don't enjoy about them. And, it, and it's a great learning tool for anyone who's into filmmaking and uh, really looking at films from a different point of view and, and maybe even being a little overcritical at times because that, that just makes you better, I think. So we're uh, doing a film here called Two Strangers Who Meet Five Times. Uh, we'll look at the credits, I guess, later and uh, we can uh, discuss what that is. So let's uh, start with the film. I think it's 11 minutes or so. So it's gonna be a short one here unless we see a lot of problems and I'll, I'll stop. I'll try to keep the stops to minimum, to a minimum if we can. All right, so I'm gonna do a little screen share here. And we're gonna start. Awesome, great. So two strangers who meet five times. Now I get this handheld thing is, is, a, is a big thing right now instead of doing cutaways and it's a, and it's a style. I'm not, not, not that enthusiastic about it at times. I don't think it's just, it's great for short, you know, low budget films. Jesus Christ. Mate, if you're looking for the Arabic option, go back a screen. Have you got a problem? What are you doing? It's a cash point. Have you got a problem? It's a cash point. I know it's a cash point. Mm. So what exactly is your problem? No, it's not a fruit machine, is it, Abdul? You put your card in, then take your cash out. What did you call me? Abdul, Ahmed, whatever. Oh, scary. You ISIS. You gonna chop my head off? It's great to show she, uh, screenshots, but you, you saw the, the guy like walk in the background. That's always disorienting because you're assuming that everything in the shot is, is intended for something. Now, if you're gonna show, I know it's a hard thing to say, especially when you're doing uh, independent films. And then I see where this is sort of going, you know, the, the the uh, the idea of how uh, how racism works and all that and, and assumptions, but but uh, when you, when you're painting a scene uh, and and you need to show something and you need somebody to notice something, you always go all in or you don't show it at all. And and when you see that like that that gentleman who walked into the shot, they probably just couldn't get him out of the shot, and, and that's all because it's low budget. But if you're going to show a crowd, you have to show more. Otherwise, it's it's uh, it's not background noise. If it's a lot of people, it's background noise. It's part of the element, part of the painting, part of the forest, let's say. And if you see one person walking in, that's really where it's just one tree. And you're probably going to chop that tree down. Or it's a mystical tree or a tree of life or it's a tree rot or something. It's a portal or something. Uh, or it's a memory or it's, it's, it's a catalyst of something. So when I see one person walking in and they just leave, it becomes weird to me. So maybe on this shot, I would have pivoted a little bit, uh, but then they might have seen something else to the right, but but uh, to the right of the screen. But uh, but I uh, but I, but, I, but I would have probably adjusted that shot or, or gone in a little more, maybe done some cutaways, so uh, that, that that person didn't need, didn't need to be there. So uh, these pedestrian areas in, in the UK are very common. Everyone here has traveled uh, to the UK or parts of Europe, and you have a lot of these heavy uh, these these awesome. Uh, pedestrian areas where there's li li limited traffic 
and uh, and uh, you can you, you can do these kind of shots, which are very wide and nice in stores, and they give character. But again, if you have one person walking in, it just feels weird to me when you have one person walking in. Uh, if you can't control that, I, I probably would have changed that a, a little bit. All right, let's keep going. Are you done? Prick. Bye bye. Costume design is really important too. I think you have to heighten the badass costume design if you're gonna go badass. You know, I'd like to introduce you to our CEO and founder, Samir Aziz. Okay, sure. Just a quick hello before we can make you an official offer. Sure. You should fit in well here. Thanks, means a lot. Oh, okay. Give me two minutes. I'll just see where he is. Really good to have met you, Alistair. Good luck. Thanks. I'll tell you, the, in, the inside camera work is really good with the lights. Some, 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 some good shadows and popping uh, there. Again, the handheld thing. I get it. it it's just... It's just Like, like you look at the shot and then and it's very pretty and this is really really pretty i think the handheld sort of takes away from some of the tension they're trying to build that with the music again great job you know i don't i don't not knocking the job you know at least they got it done it's more than most people do it so making films is sort of like riding a motorcycle you're just happy to see people in two wheels so if somebody makes a film i'm just happy to see a film uh, and, and this is not you know to push down on them it's just, it's just my observations and, and maybe in hindsight what, what i would have done that's all that is. So let's keep going. The, the static head is kind of weird, but that's fine. I guess his head's gonna come off. He's not the finished article, but he's honest and keen to learn. And yeah, I want to offer him a job. Okay, that's great. Hi, Alistair. I'm Samir. Hello, good to meet you. Sorry, do we know each other? I don't think so. You seem so familiar. Are you sure you don't know me? I, I don't think so. That guy from the cash point. I'm really sorry, I... <laughs> I don't remember you. Some great camera sorry, work here. No, sorry. Mr. Aziz. Sorry, do I know you? Yeah. You interviewed me for a job I never got. I, I don't think so. Years ago. Yeah, you did. You had an office with, um, is it green curtains and reindeer heads? Yeah, that's right. Look, it's been really difficult for us, to be honest with you. I'm waiting for a room, and I sat there a couple of weeks. Just need something to tide me over till I get back on my feet. You were right not to give me that job. I'm really sorry, I, I don't remember. Don't worry, mate, it's fine. Uh, the camera's really nice. And, and let me find a cash point. I'll be right back. 
it's it's the the, the the camera the camera is really nice just to pause for a second and you got like beautiful beautiful flesh tones are popping and you got the background it's very rich and i, I think the location is pretty good i think the the costume design here is a little better uh choices uh then they will say the first scene when they meet at the cash point which is an atm I'm, I'm assuming that's what that means so let me uh let's keep going here but uh i mean it, it's some interesting choices here of what they're doing there's a lot of great components to this short uh i, I don't i mean some moments i don't really like I, I, the handheld thing that's just a peeve of mine at, at times i think it can work i think it's it's, it's a it's a bit of a crutch on on this uh, again my opinion that's a style choice I, I just feel it's it's a little jarring and on a big screen it'd probably be even more jarring for me. But let's keep watching. Let's keep watching. Trying to show he's not an idiot by reading the book. I should tie you over for a couple of weeks. Are you sure, man? <laughs> really? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> That's a good moment. <laughs> Make today the first day everything falls into place for you. Will. Thank you so much. Good luck. Look after yourself. Thank you, Mr. Aziz. Sweet story. Showing that our lives overlap. So, yeah, you put the sand yeah. in here. And this is where, where it gets interesting. It's a good story. It's a good story. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably me, me arguing about the handheld thing. But uh, there's some really good camera work here. Some, some, some good. Alistair, come on. Come on, top tea. Positioning. Don't want you catching germs. Bye bye. Bye. This is a little hint of uh, not liking the foreigner don't catch in He's all there. He can process all the information. He sees, hears, can think like you and me. But he just finds it difficult to express himself. But we're working on that. Aren't we, Sammy? Yes, that's good. This is Alistair. Alistair's a volunteer. He's here to help the residents. Mm. Do you want to come? I don't you do that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll leave you two together. Alistair's lovely. See, here they locked Any it down. Any problems, just buzz? Sure. They locked it down. It's much more subtle, the camera movement. I, I wonder if there's one or two camera guys with this. Sammy. My name's Alistair, and I'm going to look after you, so don't you worry about a thing. Tomorrow morning, we could go for a nice stroll in the garden. Would you like that? Well, I'll take that as a yes. Yeah. Do I know you?
one's a cute short. It's a cute short. I like the way they stabilize it at the end. It's, it's actually quite, quite, you know, it's cute. It's definitely cute. I can see why there's a little bit of buzz on it and why people like it. Marcus, Mar Mar Marco, Marco, I don't know. Just looking at the credits here. Uh, bring down some of the music. So we have copyright stuff with, uh, with music stuff. We gotta be careful. But <laughs> director of photography, Chris Ferguson. That's kind of interesting. Editor, so one, it's one camera person. So I definitely felt a different feel in uh, the various shots. Maybe that's what they're trying to show the shovelness or, or uh, how their you know the life life is sort of like taking a turn. And there's a tent that something's chaotic and something's tense. Maybe, maybe a slide would have helped, you know, some sort of, you know, tracking motion would have, would have been nice. Uh, maybe some, something a little closer uh, at times. Good sized uh, crew. And I always look at that. Uh, this is coming from, from Europe, from the UK, I think. And, uh, and you sort of, Wow, this is actually a pretty big crew. Yeah, yeah, we don't get a lot of this in the States. I mean, that's the problem with, with uh, you have a first violin, a second violin, oh my God, yeah. Let's see. It's a, it's a cute film. It's a cute film, not gonna lie. It's a cute film. So, I mean, what, what do we learn from this film? Uh, one, you can tell a very impactful story with uh, some, you know, just a little bit of dialogue and two characters, which is, especially in COVID times, you're, you're looking at a film with really just two, two main characters, some peripherals, uh, some very controlled locations, which are great. Uh, I, I think that those are the best uh, types of stories we can tell uh, as, as uh, short filmmakers. And not, I mean, I'm 5'8", but you know, you know what I mean, short, short, short format films. And, and when you're doing something like that, this is, you know, th this is what people look at. They, they really look to see if, if things are, are going according to a plan and, and if there's an arc with the characters and, and you like the characters in some way. And in the initial scene, he's pretty much a racist guy. He's a racist prick, probably from his upbringing about foreigners and fear of foreigners. And, and he's saying something, I mean, maybe, maybe not 100%. Maybe he doesn't see himself as racist. Definitely doesn't see himself as racist. Uh, but but we'll have or prejudice as a, my, my son tried to correct me. Is there a difference? The difference is, is someone prejudiced or somebody racist. I think we throw around uh, the word too much. But definitely doesn't see himself as a, as negative towards other people. We'll keep it that way. But he he does lob these these little balls at this guy and he lobs these shots at this guy. So he hits him uh, with you know Abdullah and, and all that that other stuff. Hurry up! Come on, you read Arabic. You're making these assumptions, and this is a successful guy that you know you, you cross paths in many various ways as children, as older people, as uh, you know asking for help, which is great. Uh, asking for uh, you know a job. Uh, either way, it could have went. And someone saying something stupid like that uh, just, just lands, you know, can, can land on your entire life in some way. So that's a, a great thing. I, the handheld thing, I, I wish it was just a little bit more controlled at, at points. It was very disorienting. Uh, I, I, I think they were making each scene uh, unique and in, in, in its temperament. So, you know, the, 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 the ATM machine or the cash point, whatever they call it, was very wide. So it was a wide shot. It was just two figures in the world. And they're sort of communicating and it's passing the, the ships that don't really pass. And then you get into the interview and it's very tight on Alistair, Alistair and uh, Mr. Aziz or Samir, was it Sam, Sammy? Uh, it was a very tight shot on them and it showed a lot more emotion of them. And they, they, they came interacting with another. And that, that, was, uh, that, that was interesting, but it's still like a two shot. If you looked at it, it was really a two shot. Uh, of that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was a lot of two shots. I'm just thinking about it in that doorway. So there's, they're, they're passing through a door. So great metaphors here. Again, you know, you, you, everything is, uh, to, well, to my earlier point, everything's intentional in the film or you you hope that it is. And and sometimes sometimes things are laid down that uh, are intentional, even though it works in the, in, in the back of the director's head. Uh, their choice of putting them in a doorway, he's blocking his entrance 
to, to a doorway. He blocked it. And he's not letting them in. And he doesn't know what he did, but he blocked his entrance to a future. And that's that's really poignant. I assume that's what it what it was. Uh, and, and then reaching out and uh and as uh, the guy's homeless now, and then seeing uh the, the guy who denied him a, a job and him understanding why he was denied, and the other person understanding he probably took it a little too far. Uh and, and in that respect, I don't think he took it too far. It's if you're a boss, you're a boss, you wouldn't you wouldn't hire that person. I have a weird story about that actually. I had a person come and interview one time. When I was working for uh, at, a, at, a, at a production, sort of production role in the company, and uh, I guess on his resume, he, he had worked in Dubai, and I was like, "Wow, you just came from the month of Ramadan over there. How was that?" And he went on a tirade about Muslims, and uh, and I, I, I chuckled a little bit as I said, "Listen, I, you know, before you keep going, I happen to be Muslim or raised in a Muslim household, so let's, you know, I'd be careful what you say." And I was going to let him you know, just stay there, and I guess because of the way I talk and. And the way I look, he is, he is, says, yeah, sure. And he went further into it until I really showed him that I, I was a person who, who had connection to, to Islam and, and all that. And, and my family was Muslim. And, 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 all, and he said, well, I didn't get the job. I said, you, I can't fundamentally give you this job right now. Because I have no idea if you can, if you can speak to people uh, and, and, and hide those feelings. Uh, and and, and we, we don't want that sort of environment here. You, you made a big mistake. I did help him get another job. I thought he had the gifts to, to work. And I was very honest with the people who who, uh, who hired him. But And and, then, and he did fine with them for a while. Uh, I, I think he had other issues going on. But he did fine with them for a while. Uh, but but I, I, like you said, like I said, it's, it's, it's something, it does happen. It actually happens at times. People say the wrong thing to the wrong person and it impacts them and it goes down. So them seeing each other, uh, you know, after that time period, getting that help and then, you know, retirement and then seeing they knew each other from earlier life. Uh, and that was much tighter. That was much tighter. There, were, there was this glow uh, in, in the old folks home of them helping each other. And, 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 uh, and the reverse too of, of Alistair saying, do I know you? Whereas an interview, it was the other individual saying, Mr. Aziz saying, do I know you? So there, there, it was a mirror of it. So it's great five point, you know, marks on that, hitting all those, all those marks and, and, and sort of moving the world around and moving it in a different you know, time frame. So you've seen the first time they met his children. And that's interesting. And that was very tight. That was really nice and tight. Uh, so you're seeing, and no one else is in the shot, and you're, you're hearing these two kids who are very, just being kids, just being kids and talking to each other and being friendly because that's what kids do. I, I had a cousin who came here years ago, years ago, and I, on my other podcast, I mentioned that I'll probably always mention on every every episode that, that I am Albanian. I'm an immigrant, came here as a kid, and I had a, a cousin of mine who came here. It's like two, three years old, and he was staying in Brooklyn with some family members, and it was uh, in uh, Dittmas Park, Brooklyn, and it, it's a very mixed area. And, and one of his best friends was was this this this, uh, this black kid from the neighborhood, and they were, uh, it was funny because he was his best friend. We had, we had photos of them like hugging each other. And it, my cousin couldn't speak English. But the, the, the language of playfulness, the language of children was so rich that for like a couple of months, these kids were inseparable. They were inseparable. They ate together. My aunt would get, get the kids ice cream together. They were walking around and just like laughing and giggling with each other. And there was just a, a real bond uh, with them, which I think was, was amazing. Hell, it happened to my kids. And uh, my kids went to vacation when they were young in Albania. They couldn't speak any Albanian. They were on the beach. I, I, when I, I came there a little later. I sent them ahead of me with my family. And they were on the beach playing with these kids. And my kids don't, didn't speak Albanian. And these kids were, other kids were just so friendly with them. They, were, they became this little, little group of, ki of, of kids playing on the beach every day, every day, every day. And they, they figured out how to communicate. So that, that's, a, that's a very true thing. So sweet movie. It landed well. I think, and sometimes the land is the most important thing. And it landed really, really well. So g give it a watch. You know, I mean, I know you watch it with me, but watch it on your own. Watch it on your own time, your own pace. And that's the point of these, uh, uh, these reviews and, and, and sort of your viewings and reactions. Is, is, uh, is it selling? Is it really worth the watch? And sometimes you can watch these things and learn something. And, and even like I said, you know, there's a style in there that I don't like, but there might have been something that, that you really enjoy. I'd love to know what cameras they use. They, they had a solid crew. They had a nice big crew. But I'd love to know the cameras they used uh, for, for this because I think the colors are really good. And that's hard to get flesh tone right. Uh, so, you know, kudos to the team for lighting. 
especially when you have a redheaded white guy and, and you have somebody who was, who was from, from the East and he's got def- such a different complexion and, and the lights are different and they're playing with both. I think that was really, really nice. So, you know, good, good job on this one. You know, I liked it. I, I guess it's, it's worth some of the views. Uh, the, the movie camera thing aside. But watch it. Keep watching. And keep watching short films. Just watch as many as you can. They're out there. There's tons out there. That's where filmmakers are coming from. That's where people are pushing these ideas. And sometimes you need a little idea that, that says a lot for a short amount of time. So take that with you. See you soon. And subscribe, like, share. Please just watch the podcast. I know it sounds weird, but this is sort of what I'm doing. I want to do this and I want to keep doing this. And this is a passion of mine, you know, admiring films and loving films and loving what people do uh, is, is awesome and, and learning from what people do, you know, be, be it taking away something that maybe I don't really like or something I really admire. That's, that's what we are. We're human creatures. So let's just be human and, and keep doing. Thank you. Bye.